about the had a nice relaxing weekend with the family yourself yeah all good um not a lot really just uh, yeah it's nice to not do a lot though isn't it yeah it's the quietest yeah. weekend i've had in ages uh, went to hamburg that was very um not <laughs> quiet <laughs> not so quiet lots to look at um but back now good 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 so here we are episode seven thank you for joining us and this one kicking off the show Mystic State track entitled Maddie. Forthcoming, or shall I say, is this out now? About right about now. Right about now, this one is out on article Large Up J Kenzo. Make sure you go grab yourself a copy. <laughs> I believe you've got something else brand new for me. Yes. So this one, uh, Faulty DL and original Don, Donny, Don, Don, Don. Benny Ill on the rework of this. This is like a, a bit of a different kind of vibe for our show. No, oh, well, we like different. And this is um, Fat Larry's Revenge Mix, a.k.a. Benny Ill. Heavy. Larging up the Benny Ill each and every. And the title of this is Ill Bent 40 DL versus Benny Ill. And this one's forthcoming uh, in May, Blueberry Records. Check it out. Take it all easy. 
bring the Isam and Skitam, you hear? Tonight is still a night. Era. Cool one, beef, man. Record box in the van. Young man. Larry Session, man. Young man. So it's talking to some of my life. Benny Hill up on uh, one episode. I don't know why, but this just reminds me, I can just imagine like listening to this sitting on a balcony somewhere on holiday. I don't know why. It's not <laughs> particularly like a summery tune, but like, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of feels like you should be drinking a beer. <laughs> well, we are. True. <laughs> so up next, we've got something that's forthcoming on Century. Not quite sure of the dates, but it's... Uh, Definitely forthcoming, and so for therefore we'd call it a nice dub, wouldn't we? Yeah. Out to the abstract sonance and substance. This one is entitled... Smoking Blunts. Ooh. And uh, you know you get those tracks where you sort of think, this could actually make you shit your pants. <laughs> is this, is this, this one, is one of those, of is it? Yeah. yeah. This is one of them. I haven't heard this yet, so I better... Uh, so for those of you listening on a commute, you might be on a train, <laughs> might be in traffic, sitting near the toilet. Just uh, go easy with this one. <laughs> it's the cleanser. <laughs> Smoking blunts, a.k.a. the clear out. <laughs> Check it out. And my banger in the bag for you this week is by Unki, and it's called Cloud Circle. Um, it's forthcoming on an EP of the same name, and it'll be out on my label, Photo Sounds, very soon. So make sure you keep an eye on him. Cheers.
bit of news on this next track then yes so uh, our good friend Vivek <coughs> did reveal when we had that interview with him yes that he was starting another label that is purely for his own productions this is the first release on that label large enough Vivek this one entitled Galactic and this is the dub version looking forward to this it's great them subwoofers are gonna pump Nice no, thought you played the dub version though, eh? Yeah. Good stance. Good distance. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. 
Wicked tune. Out to Vivek. Wicked release. Wicked release. Definitely go grab this one when it's out. Haven't got a release date yet, but um, it shouldn't be too long, I wouldn't have thought. And self-titled label, Vivek001, this. Episode 7 already, mate. That's what I'm saying, I can't believe <laughs> we're nearly at the end of April. I know. This year's flying by. Right, so we've got something else titled Chalice on this next deck. Yeah, this one, a newcomer, goes by the name of Base Buddha. Track entitled Chalice. Fresh out of the in depth radio inbox. Remember, send us your music in depth radio UK at gmail.com. <laughs> So here's a question then on the spot. If you had a go-to track, instant dance floor smasher. You got a couple that you pick? Oh, mate. Um, could be one of your own, surely. Of course. Just all of mine. Yeah, <laughs> all of mine. Don't know. How about you? Um, I don't know if it is one of yours. I t- uh, a bit of an obvious one, though. Like victim support, I suppose, is just instant. Oh. Put your drink down, get on the dance floor. Or... Um, that Bengu and Koki track that luckily no one seems to have except me Nando's you know Nando's. it oh, you right, do know okay. it it's called Nando's Bengu no one knows it's called see because I've got another Bengu and Koki one no one ever seems to have I wonder the same one <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah yeah oh. this one's um dun 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 <laughs> yeah, I know that one. Down, 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 down. I know that's that true. Probably yep. instant, instant wheel up the thing. There you go, <laughs> and, and that was uh, me and Darkside um, improvising dubstep with our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> so this next track, uh, we played the original mix back on series one. True. Come out of Wheel and Dill, Mr. K on production, titled IP Thirteen. But this, this is, uh, I, I can, I'm going to say it's exclusive because um, I, I'm going to say it is. And uh, it was sent by Sim and it's the Sim remix. So thank you, Sim. Thanks, Sim. Check it out.
So, on this episode of In Depth Radio, I'm very lucky to have Sicaria Sound on the telephone. It's taken a little while, but we finally made it happen. How's it going? Yeah, we're good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all good. Just trying to kind of wind down from a busy day. How about yourselves? I mean, not going to lie, we had a very typical Sicaria day. Lots of thinking, lots of planning, lots of decisions, lots of arguing, <laughs> and then a big dinner at the end. <laughs> I can't imagine you two arguing. What are you arguing about? I'm not going to lie. We say argue, but it's not really arguing. It's more like, we call it constructive bickering. Yeah, I think the thing is with what we do, because we spend, I'd say, like 90% of our time together, even though we were best friends before we started this thing, we spend so much time thinking about what we're doing now, thinking about our next move. And sometimes we're not going to like see eye to eye on absolutely everything. But I say one of the best parts of Sicaria is that we always give each other a chance and we say, do you know at least like hey what do you think of this and if the other person doesn't agree we're going to talk about it and we're going to come to something i'm assuming maybe because you guys were a duo kind of too you guys have probably felt that too no oh definitely yeah i have to watch i have to watch dark side carefully he always wants to drop in some of his older trance classics who's the strictest out of you 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 both do you kind of listen to stuff because you're a duo do you listen to stuff together and he's, are you kind of like, no, 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 we ain't playing that in the set. And it's one of you like, yeah, this tune's big. Like, how do you work it out? <laughs> Listen, big up the trance classics, yeah. You've got to let them have it sometimes. Um, do you know what? On our end, if we're looking for music, A, we love a good SoundCloud dig. That is where we find a lot of gems, as I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, we make an effort to go through everything in the inbox. And I mean... Yeah, actually, we have a bit of a system. Um, Maybe if people heard this, they think it was long, but it's it's something that's um, almost uh, necessary within with being the duo. Otherwise, music ends up being lost. But yeah, we've got a document where we um, list all the tracks that we've either found or tracks that we've been sent, um, just so we kind of remember what we have in the bag. And actually, it was really nice the other day to read another interview on Kemi and Storm, and apparently they did that as well. So yeah, that that definitely gassed us a bit. But in terms of, in terms of strictness, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Imperatura is it me? <laughs> yeah, it's fully in Deco. I'm not gonna lie. Let's write it down. Sancho and Deco is the strictest amongst <laughs> amongst the two of us. And you know what? Yeah, sometimes it does come to that point where we're like, do is this one that we're gonna play out? And like we were saying earlier, we definitely don't always decide. Sometimes I get my own way. Sometimes Inventura gets her own way. You just got to have that balance, you know? I just wind up saying, look, trust me. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> Wait till the night and watch it go off. And then I'm like, see? <laughs> Sometimes. I oh, totally am with you on the SoundCloud dig. I mean, that's how... Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of the new guys that I've signed recently have all come through me just basically wasting hours trawling uh, SoundCloud. So you mentioned about being a duo. I mean, were you both DJs at all separately before that, if you see what I mean? Did you ever do any um, gigs independently? Yeah, so it all kind of started back at uni. Um, I grew up in a really musical household. My dad's a reggae singer. My mum has collected a lot of jazz, African soul, etc. vinyls over the years. So I started to collect records. And then it was a year or two into uni and I got myself some turntables, was giving it a go. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was really underconfident with it and it held me back from doing like to pursuing it and taking it further but I was still giving it a go here and there Lou of course because one of the main things that we bonded over at uni was music Lou of course she wanted to give it a go as well kind of wound up having um I had the opposite experience when it came to music although I did study music at school as one of my subjects and I did grow up like playing violin um playing the guitar and singing um my family are more of a traditionalist Muslim slash Moroccan household um so I didn't really grow up 
with the intention of being able to get into music because it wasn't something that was sold to me as something that I could do. But it wasn't until actually the influence of Sancha and going out to nights and stuff that I decided to buy, buy my own CDJ setup, which um, I combined with Sancha's vinyl setup, covered up the beat count so I could be able to actually go back to back with Sancha on her vinyl. Yeah, I have to really large up Lou for that. Like the fact that the minute she got her CDJs, I come in and I see that she's just put a bit of red tape on them. I was like, do you know what? Like, yeah, Lou's always been a certified G, I'm not going to lie, but yes. <laughs> she's actually too kind. I got you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a similar way that it happened to me. I was actually a metaler playing uh, guitar in like, uh, yeah, like fresh metal bands. And then um, I hated dance music, absolutely hated it. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to uni and started going to clubs and I was like, yeah, this isn't too bad. And then um, one of my best mates was just a mad jungle head and garage head and that was it, started going out. And then before you know it, um, there was kind of this weird dark sound coming from garage. And then um, that was it. Oh, that's actually so interesting um, saying you're in a metal band, you know, because another thing that coincidentally bonded me and Imbatura was actually a joint um, love of darker sounds like rock and metal. Um, even before, as well, seeing as you were talking about Jungle, before dubstep for us was actually a, a joint love for drum and bass. Yeah. So some like, interesting crossover here. It's cool, <laughs> yeah. it's cool. So you guys recently absolutely smashed uh, a Boiler Room TV appearance uh, I mean, how did that come around and, and what did that mean to you both to be able to do that and to then see the response afterwards? Thank you so much regarding the Boiler Room TV. I'm not going to lie, man. It's been so, so, it's been a bit mad for us. Um, we didn't expect the response that we got because we kind of just, we kind of just went there wanting to obviously do us and play the normal kind of sets that we usually play. And funnily enough, um, no contact, speaking yeah. about the whole situation, we were actually booked to do the boiler room before this one. So they had um, two in this. They've had two in the series so far. We were booked to do the first one, and we turned it down because a um, we feel like the whole comment, like negative comment community, is I don't know how to say it. Yeah, it's it's definitely quite toxic, and I feel like. You know, we, again, me and Abitura discuss this as we do everything and to put yourself into that space, you know, that's quite a big decision. Like you can be mentally prepared for it, but at the same time, you know, it is a choice to put yourself into that environment. And sometimes like, even if you are prepared, you're like, I just, right now, I don't actually want to do that. So yeah, we, we did actually end up turning down the first one. Yeah. And also we're pretty patient in terms of our musical endeavors. We'll never rush to jump and um, accept an offer that we don't really feel like is good for us in the moment. For example, that lineup for the first one wouldn't have benefited us. Whereas when we when we were given the the lineup for the second one, it felt like it felt more like us. And also, they'd upgraded the sound for the second one, so it was a bit better. Saying that though, sound wise, it was really funny. Um, there's one thing that me and Imbatura are always very like keen to make sure we've got down is EQing and respecting the game and unfortunately the acoustics and boiler room were not in our favour we were actually told uh, to turn the gain up um, to the red line level and there was a bit of slack for it amongst like all DJs who were playing that night but yeah again just, that's just linking back to that point of people will really go ham with the criticism and you just have to be ready for that. You can either look at it or you can look away, but it's definitely up there. So you've just got to know it's there and just, you know, you've got to move past it. Yeah, and just be confident in your abilities. At the end of the day, you wouldn't be where you were if you weren't good. See, I think this is a, a big thing about being involved in music or being in front of people in, in, in any form, whether you're DJing, whether it's art, anything. And that's that you do need to be very mentally stable. I don't think people consider it when they think, yeah, I'm going to become a DJ or I'm going to release some music. I don't think they ever sit and think, oh, hang on a minute, you know, there might actually actually be some people who dislike this stuff. Or it's not even that they dislike it, they just, they're quite happy to just sit on a computer and just basically write awful things about you, <laughs> which is fucking grim. But um, fair play to you both, you know, for taking your time and doing it at a time that seemed right to you. You know, it definitely, yeah, definitely feels right from, from watching it and listening back to it. Um, and also respect about what you're saying about the sound you know I'm kind of the same but then do you know what there's just times 
there's just times you end up redlining and people moaning about it on online. I guarantee you, everyone who's moaning about it have redlined themselves. Of course they have. It's just what happens. And the, the thing that always happens to me is you, you know, you say to yourself, yeah, I'm not going to redline. I'm going to keep things nice and level. But what happens if the DJ on before you has been like redlining through the whole of his set, you know, and you come on and there's no sound guy, what are you going to do? You're going to go up there and turn your, turn the mixer down like, 5 dB or whatever just so you're not redlining and then everyone's going to look at you and be like why is this guy so quiet so it's, it's a difficult one and people shouldn't judge at home because they don't know what's going on <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Funny, funny you mentioned the sound guy. Um, obviously, because we go back to back, there was one point when Endeco was on the decks, and I turned around, and who do I see next to me whiling out in the crowd? The sound guy. He's just enjoying it so much. He's left his own position. He's he's out there with us. In terms of the toxicity and the um, negative comments that we've been talking about, you're absolutely right. You just have to have confidence in your own abilities and be willing to take the risk and do what you feel like is not just best for you in the moment but things that will satisfy your soul too um, at the end of the day you're the only obstacle to your own success and something that we really felt as Sakaya from the beginning is a lot of people don't know this but we got a lot of shit for playing dubstep um, I mean stereotyp stereotypically a lot of people look at us and think we're R&B DJs because you know we're people of, of colour we have curly hair and, um, women. and we're women yes exactly but yeah Embature is spot on like I think at the end of the day, like one thing that could have easily deterred us when we started out was like colleagues, friends, and sometimes even associates, just people you met. Um, they had a thing to say about dubstep. Um, even if they weren't that familiar with the genre, the word for them was kind of taboo. Yeah. Um, they made a lot of assumptions and we were almost, in fact, we were full on laughed at at some points of playing it, but, and especially this is really, helped in being a duo we've always had each other's backs we've always had faith in the genre we've we've been going to dances for time DJing was just the next step we love the music and we all we've ever wanted to do was hope that that comes across and so for other people to not have as much confidence in it at the end of the day that's down to them just like Embratura was saying you've got to have that faith in yourself you've got to have that faith in the sound and then everything comes together so have you guys ever thought about production you know is, is that something you're considering uh, exploring in the future? Well, actually, funny you ask that. Um, I guess we're saying it officially now because we haven't got the opportunity to speak about it on radio. And we've got a handful of friends or close people that um, know this already, but we've um, we've been, been dabbling in production for a minute now. Um, I downloaded Logic, uh, I'd say, this time last year, whereas uh, Endeco has been working on FL Studio and we both tried Ableton it's kind of gone over our heads that one's going to be something we crack in the <laughs> in the future <laughs> and you know what um, seeing as we were again we were talking about abuse um, one guy did try to troll us and he tried to be like oh you're just playing out other people's productions um, A we have always said from the start we are more than happy and in fact we absolutely love supporting other people's music at the end of the day like if you're putting together a set it's so important to have a wide variety of sounds so to support other people's music is a no-brainer but funnily enough to the guy who trolled us just earlier on that night in the set we had actually put one of the tracks that we'd made in there so it just shows you know i feel like sometimes there are assumptions for whatever reason of um djs them thinking like maybe they're not interested in production or they haven't done it yet but yeah it's something which is important to us we also have spent time working as radio producers where we did some sound engineering as well so honestly all aspects of sound like any angle of it, me and Imbratura are going to want to try and take it on at some point, and production's one of them. So you did actually mention to me before this interview, so um, I hope I'm allowed to mention this, that you're also going to be starting your own label. So um, I'm not going to lie, you two sound like you're going to be pretty busy. <laughs> Yes, we're allowed to talk about the label now. Um, I feel like we're in, a, we're in a position where we're ready to actually start um, getting the feelers out there in terms of the record label because it's actually something that we um, we came up with the idea for this label this time last year? Oh, even before. And to even officially get the name out, um, it's going to be called Cut Cross Recordings with the tag being um, Cross Cutting Boundaries in Music, as ambiguous as that sounds. But uh, yeah, there's going to be more of a focus on like amalgamating a sort of variety of sounds that aren't stereotypically associated with 140, well, 140 BPM. 
And you know what? Something else as well, I'd say, instead of maybe calling it a label, um, I guess in some ways it's more like a project-led approach um, to make more of like a platform. Again, I'm going to wrap up this and keep it very ambiguous, but we're trying to, yeah, we're trying to like make a community out of it. So look, just want to say a big thank you for giving up your spare time and having a chat with us. It's been great to catch up and um, yeah, take it easy. Hopefully see you both soon yes yes thank you so much for having us um we absolutely love your platform and what you guys do with in-depth radio yeah i have to back that up fully like you know obviously like we're all trying to keep it going in the scene and, and definitely what you guys have done in the past leading all the way up to now yeah definitely so important and we'll constantly like constantly constantly put respect on your name so thank you very much for talking to us Yes, larging up the Sicario sound each and every, very good to catch up with you both. Thanks for speaking to us, both of you, you two are killing it right now. If you haven't, go back and check out their uh, Boiler Room TV set. They smashed it, I watched that. You Into know, this. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, something else that smashes it. This one shouldn't need no introduction. It's like an old Get Darker TV anthem. But this is like a... Emperor's Calling. Emperor's Call. Old tight chromey. Very lucky enough to play in uh, Poznan a couple of weeks ago in Poland. I just want to big up the sub bass terror gang. Uh, to one who came out it was a yeah, it was a big big night. Nice. Yes. Did they get you to play more than one hour, or was it just a one hour set? Do you know what? I actually ended up playing uh, longer than I was supposed to, which is unusual. <laughs> because I don't know what it is. Sometimes you know. You, it's like even like 90 minute sets, sometimes you get to like bang on that 90 minutes and you're like, yeah, I'm done. I'm kind of like, yeah. I feel like I've, <laughs> I've done done the job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember back in the day, if someone said, like, can you play two hours? Like, yeah, mate. Bring it on <laughs> now. <laughs> so you can't even stand up for two no. hours. <laughs> <laughs> Normally need a wee after that long. <laughs> Sign of old age. That's it. So this one is forthcoming on Nebula. Uh, this one done the rounds for a while on dub. A lot, uh, everyone wanted their hands on this. So, of course, some of you might remember there was a uh, someone done that clip. It wasn't of this, but do you yeah, remember Mayor Share? I do. I someone done the uh, Get Dark TV clip for about four hours on YouTube. See, it didn't make it to the interview, but I actually spoke to Sicario Sound about it, and they they hadn't seen it, so I sent them a little uh, them a little video <laughs> of it. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was impressive as well how easy it's been to put these last few episodes together because the amount of music we've got. Oh, mate. Healthy. The scene, nice. the scene feels very, very healthy for new music for sure. So up next, we've got something from Nerve. True. I'm looking forward to this. I haven't heard this yet. Yeah, he's a good old boy, isn't he? Track entitled Warting. we got Demon. All the original macabre unit, Famalam. I remember I took them down to Rince years ago. I had to meet them in a um, McDonald's. I was just going to say McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. And I had to take them down there and they absolutely caned it. They, they, they were so sick. 
all the original yeah. macabre unit beats and uh, some of their stuff on Dump Valve. <sighs> was it Taurus? Was that one of the labels? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember um, that? The Star Side Ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should do a Grime show on episode. We should. Got a pair of them. Good idea. Okay, so this one's called War Ting and it's by Nerve and it's forthcoming on Nominee. More info in a minute. Check it out. Tune by the nerve, warting. Bigging up Raf on this. So this one's uh, forthcoming on Badman Sounds EP, uh, nominee sound NS011 if you want the catalogue number. And it's due out April in mm. about a week's time. And large up the nominee, you can catch me and him and Jack Sparrow in Brighton on the 3rd of May at the Volks for Back to Basics. Love that venue. So up next, we've got uh, something brand new and also not quite released yet on Terror Rhythm. And uh, this one's Rapture 4D and Gloomy. It already sounds wavy. And this is part of the Green Boson EP.
musical. Big, big production. Substances is the title. Terror Rhythm is the label. This is... Is it Rupture, 4D and Gloomy? Yes. So this is In-Depth Radio. Thank you for listening once again. True. And thanks if you have been listening since we started as well. I wonder when we've done our first show. I think it was June. Yes, because I was in a stag, on a stag in New York. Oh, yeah. And that's we recorded it before we went out there, and then it went live when I was out there. That was it. So June. So not right. long now till our first Ooh. birthday. Yeah. So into this, something brand new from uh, the In-Depth Radio Inbox. I really like the sounds of this. Check this one out. This one's RBF, and uh, the title is Breeze Block. Not sure... I don't know much about RBF. It landed in the inbox, take, took a listen and thought, bang it on. You liked it? Yeah. yeah. Something I've not heard it yet, so I'm, uh, I should enjoy it. You better lace up your boots, mate. It's Thank good you. To. I'm going to. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Proper old school grime, eight yeah, bar. Yeah, man, fitting this, little rough around the edges. What's yeah, it's about. Exactly. I thought, got this in, I thought, we got the foot going, little. Yeah, got the uh, little little skank. Yeah, little, I can see it. It's nice. Pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, not, I've not heard this next week. Keep clashing on this show. I keep talking over you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I apologise <laughs> for everyone listening. It's my fault. <laughs> That's quite all right. Can I have a go? Go. Okay, so this one <laughs> is a uh, subsonic. Sabasonic. Sabasonic. So this one's Sabasonic. Uh, Booter is a title. And I've uh, got some info on this. Can I? It's forthcoming. Right. No, oh, Tell yeah. me. I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm ready for this information. It's uh, Carabinic Sound. Okay. Forthcoming. The 12th release, check it out. Something new also in the in-depth radio inbox. So just a little bit more evidence that we do go through the tunes, send them over. We might play them. You can have a go now. Thank you. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just want to listen to this. Not heard it. Oh, 
up next I'm excited to be playing the next one because uh, I've been feeling this track for a while it's uh, forthcoming on Jack Sparrow's Ooh. brand new album which is entitled Dark 365 on Deep Medi Recordings and it is coming out at the end of May now that's big big news it's true larging up the uh, Jack Sparrow each and every this one goes off Double time skank. Out to all the Medi gang, out to Mella. This one could also make you soil your Calvin Klein's, couldn't it? <laughs> it could. Commando from now on. <laughs> Uh. 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 Uh.
going to batter this one. So take note, end of May. Dark 365, name of the album. Look out for it, Deep Midi. And as far as we know, there's 12 tracks on this album. Nice, some collabs on there as well, I think. And if it's all fire like this, it'll be a lovely album. That's <laughs> yeah. all we can hope for. Speaking up, Jack Sparrow. Okay, what do we have next then? So next we have something from uh, another dubstep OG. Yep, for sure. Goes by the name of Casper. Casper, Casper. Some Kasper. people may have heard of him. This one is entitled Anyone Else. And this one is uh, coming soon on Century. Yes, Century have an LP coming, which I think is a, like a compilation LP. And this one will be on that LP. So large enough, Casper, out to Youngster. Enjoy. Anyone else? to hear because he um, still makes across the board. Yes. And he, um, yeah, kind of not your uh, stereotypical Casper track. And it packs if a there track. is a stereotypical Casper track. Indeed. And this one, uh, it's got a bit of a punch behind this, isn't it? That, mm. So yeah. hopefully some of you get to listen to these podcasts on uh, decent headphones or decent something. It does True. make a big difference, doesn't it? It really does. I've just been using those, um, you know the Apple headphones you get, the wireless ones? Yeah. So, I hate to say, I bought a pair of those. And I think for the money you spent on those, I could have got a proper pair of headphones. Yeah, just, just, yeah you uh, could, yeah, because they're Bluetooth, aren't they? Yeah, and they look what nice. What are they called? Apple Air or something? AirPods. AirPods, that's the one. They're all right, but they don't do this justice. No. Do you uh, know what time it is? It's time for that secret track. Oh, and you, you're one yes. So for those oh, yeah. who uh, got in touch on the comments on, I think it was on Instagram or SoundCloud, someone hit us up and said, oh, how can I buy that, uh, what was the track last week? Sensi Dub. That's it, yeah. Clue Kid and Cotty. And you got it, so it's one nil to you. So how can I buy it now? It's like, you can't buy that sort mm. of stuff now, can you? I don't know if you can. I mean, digitally, maybe. You can buy, I don't know if it, okay, well, I don't know. Did it come out? I don't know. Digitally? No idea. I said, sorry, mate. Did it uh, come out? Did it, yeah, 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 it yeah. did come out. Yeah. So, shall we push plan? You can push plan this Here one. we go. Are you ready? So, this is your secret track to me, and I've got to guess yeah. it. So, I need the title of the and track. That's it. And, and the, the artist. artist. Yeah. Yep. And I was just going to say label, but I can't <laughs> remember the label. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to have been released. Come on, it, it is released. It is released. Yeah, this used to get smashed at DMZ. I used to smash this one. I 
about to say Koki. <laughs> but you would have been wrong, so it's oh. a good job you didn't. I used to play this as well. You've oh. I used to love this snare. This snare is just like really woody. Boom. I know the track, but at the moment, mate, you've got me. Let's wait for this little drop, shall we? Might give it all away. Oh. <laughs> it was embarrassing. I used to play this. Yeah, it was a big one, but it's one of them ones where I don't know if many people actually knew much about this one. Oh. And I hate to say it, I think this is one of them tunes where I think I might have even been sent it and I was like, oh, yeah, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? Not thinking much of it. And then I heard it being played out and I was like, fuck it out. Yeah, what is this? That tune, that tune. Oh. Straight back home, dig it out, cut it, boom. Oh. Um, this is really, ain't, this ain't going to go down well. But do you know what? I'll oh, be surprised. Go on. Juju. <gasps> Juju. Uh, oh, oh no way! Did you get it? No way, that's it. Is that it? Yes, yeah, mate. Yes. I, I had no idea oh, you was gonna get you know that. What? Yes. Well done. I used to hammer this. Oh man. And I remember we done a live stream from San Francisco. That's where he's from. That's where he's from. Yeah, and he lives in Oakland, the other side of the Oakland Bridge. Oh, we got man. Juju, mate. Damn it. Big rhythm. Yes, one all. Well done. Well done. <laughs> oh, I'm well mate, I'm so that. surprised. So I heard it. I thought I would know this. I used yeah. to actually play it. I used to actually play it all the time. Well, there we go, mate. I'm honestly <laughs> surprised. Yes. Oh, I'm well pleased with that. Yeah, we've done a... Um, me and Cyrus. Me, Cyrus, Cuts and Klukid went to San Francisco. Oh, I'm <laughs> guessing 2000 and... Maybe nine. Mm-hmm. Something like that. And, um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, me, Cuts, Klukid and Cyrus. We played out there for Big Up magazine. Damn, Rich Sam. Oh, right, yeah. And we'd done a live stream from a record shop, and then we had um, Juju come for down. Kat- Katia. Yeah. Katia? Yeah. And there's a record, I can't remember the name of the record shop now. I'd love to know if it's still there. One of my favourite cities in the world, that is San Francisco. And um, we'd done a live stream from a record shop, and you can even you can even watch the live stream now, and if you see the quality of it, it's so bad. It's like really? I'm streaming from a laptop camera. Right. Built-in camera, that is, like from the screen. Um, yeah, on wi- some dodgy Wi-Fi. No, you know, Wi-Fi nowadays mm-hmm. is good. Mm-hmm. Then it weren't. And we've done a live stream. The quality is so bad. We had a Big Up magazine banner in the background, and we've done UK versus USA. And it, was, it was actually pretty sick, but it's, it's still up on YouTube. If you head over to getdarker.com and type in... I think it's episode 37. How bad is that? Wow. I remember that. Wow. <laughs> or just type memory. in live stream San Francisco or something, you'll see it. That's how I got it because uh, I'll never forget that trip. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I could one. see the look on your face. You genuinely are very happy. I am over the moon because <laughs> this is a forgotten gem. And for me, it is one that's. It is, though, isn't it? It's it's like it's it's it pop- I've been meaning to play it for weeks. It, but every time I've come in, I've like, oh, I didn't forget the bloody truth. And it was always easy to <clears> mix. <throat> Yeah, yeah, bum, yeah. Bum, bum, yeah, 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 yeah. It was bum, a wicked bum, one to bum, mix bum, with anything. Yeah, it just worked. But um, that's why you should play it. <laughs> it's just true, mix of anything. Yeah. But I did. I, I think he quit. I think like years ago. I think he stopped doing it. And so yeah. a really random thing is someone told me that he was making sounds for toys. How oh, random yeah. is that? But whether you know, it could be sex toys. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they need sounds, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Right, that's us done then. That's mate. it. One one. I'm well pleased. That's made my day. There we go. Equal. Yeah, <laughs> we're back even. That's episode seven. So we will be back in two weeks. Big up. See you later.